In this training exercise, we will be discussing the non-regulatory flood depth and analysis grids. These grids, which are also referred to as raster data sets, provide community leaders a better way to communicate flood risk in a way that is more measurable and relatable than simply stating that a property is in or out of the regulatory floodplain. Utilizing these raster data sets properly can make them extremely powerful tools. In the following video, we will give an overview of the flood depth grids, the percent annual chance grid, and the percent 30 year chance grid. Demonstrate how to implement some best practices for symbolizing the grids in ArcMap, and go through an example to show how these raster data sets can be used to effectively communicate flood risk. The first grids we will examine are the flood depth grids. These grids convey the depth of flooding across the entire mapped floodplain to enable an understanding of the magnitude of flood risk associated with each flood event. Flood depth grids are created for the 10%, 4%, 2%, 1%, and 0.2% annual chance flood events. Depth is calculated as the difference in feet between the water surface elevation and the ground elevation at each cell of the raster data set. It's easier for our citizens to understand three feet depth of flooding, which might mean above their doorstep, versus a BFE of 600 feet. The next grid we will examine is the percent annual chance grid. This raster data set represents the percent annual chance of flooding for locations along the flooding source within the 0.2% annual chance floodplain. In lieu of the traditional in or out philosophy of floodplain management, this grid helps officials and residents understand the relative probability of being flooded. The last grid we will examine is the percent 30 year chance grid. This raster data set represents the probability of flooding at least once within a 30 year period for all locations within the extent of the 0.2% annual chance floodplain. 30 years is equivalent to the time frame of a standard home mortgage. By putting the concept of flood risk in a more relatable time frame, this grid is very useful in dispelling misconceptions that there is little chance of being flooded over the life of a mortgage. Like the other grids, this grid continues to emphasize that knowing whether you are in or out of the floodplain boundary is only the beginning of understanding relative flood risk and provides a visual example that is easily understood. Out of the box or out of the flood risk database, these grids may not seem visually significant. In the next sections, we will demonstrate how to bring the grids into ArcMap and symbolize them to maximize their visual impact and make them easier to use and understand. Navigate to the depth grids the percent annual chance grid, and the percent 30 year chance grid, and add them to your ArcMap document. We will set the symbology for one of the depth grids first. To do this, right click on the depth grid, select Properties, and then select the Symbology tab. Click Classified. If this is the first time you have rendered the grids classified, you will be prompted to compute a histogram. Statistical information, such as a histogram, is required for raster datasets to perform geoprocessing operations. Click Yes. This may take several minutes to complete. Once the histogram is completed, click the Classify button and manually set the break values to intervals that best represent the message you would like to convey with the data. In this example, we will divide the depth grid into two-foot intervals. We are only interested in visualizing flooding up to eight feet, so everything above eight feet will be symbolized the same. Click OK. Now select a color ramp that best depicts the different intervals. Click Apply.
Since we are overlaying the grid on imagery and building footprints, we will set a transparency on the grid so that the other data sets can be seen. To do this, click the Display tab. In the Transparency box, input the percentage you wish to show. For this example, we'll use 50%. We will also enable the map tips control so that the grid values will appear when you hover your cursor over the data set. This eliminates the need to click on the cells to see their attributes and allows you to quickly see depths near a location or a structure. To do this, check the box next to show map tips. Click OK. Now click the box to turn on the grid that you just symbolized. It is now easier to visualize the depth values associated with the grid. To speed up the process of symbolizing the other depth grids, you can import the symbology you set for the previous depth grid. For example, right-click on the 1% annual chance depth grid. Select Properties. Click the Symbology tab. Click Classified, and then click the folder icon in the upper right. Select the 4% Annual Chance Depth Grid from the Layer drop-down list. Click OK. You'll notice that the same intervals and color ramp have been applied to this grid. Click OK. Next, we will set the symbology for the percent annual chance grid, following the same process defined before. For this example, we will divide the percent annual chance grid into intervals of 2%. We will also assign it a different color ramp than the depth grid so that we can tell them apart. We will also set the transparency to 50% and enable map tips. Finally, we will symbolize the percent 30 year chance grid following the same process. In order to visualize the full range of values associated with this grid, we will divide the grid into 10 equal intervals. Since the cell values are percentages, click the percent button above the list of break values. Select a color ramp and set the transparency to 50% and enable map tips. In summary, here are a few things to remember when choosing symbology. Select an easy to read color ramp. Choose the number of classifications based on the message you would like to convey with the data. Set a transparency when using the grids with other data sets. Enable map tips to quickly see grid values. Symbology settings can be imported from one grid to another to save time. Now we will use the grids we symbolized in the previous exercise in another example in ArcMap. In this example, we will examine three different locations in and around the 1% annual chance flood hazard area and determine their depth of flooding during the 1% annual chance flood event, their probability for flooding, and their probability for flooding over a 30-year period using the grids we symbolized. Note that locations A and B are within the Special Flood Hazard Area, depicted by the red line, and location C is outside, but still very close to the boundary. Turn on the 1% Annual Chance Depth Grid. Hover over location A to determine the depth of flooding. It is 1.3 feet. 
Now hover over location B. It has a depth of flooding of 0.3 feet. Finally, hover over location C. The map tip displays no data. Since location C is outside of the floodplain boundary, it will not have a flood depth associated with the 1% annual chance flood event. Next, we will determine the probability for flooding in any given year for these three locations using the percent annual chance grid. Turn off the depth grid and turn on the percent annual chance grid. Hover over each location to determine the probability of flooding in any given year. Location A has a probability of 2.9%. Location B has a probability of 1.3%. Although location C is outside of the floodplain boundary, you will notice that it still has a 0.5% probability for flooding in any given year. This emphasizes that knowing whether you are in or out of the floodplain boundary is only the beginning of understanding your relative flood risk. Now let's examine the locations with the percent 30 year chance grid to determine the probability for flooding at least once over the lifespan of a standard 30 year mortgage. Turn off the percent annual chance grid and turn on the percent 30 year chance grid. Hover over each location to determine the probability. Location A has a probability of 58.5%. Location B has a probability of 36.4%. And although location C is outside of the floodplain boundary, it still has a 12.8% probability for flooding over a 30-year period. Again, emphasizing that there are still flood risks despite being outside of the floodplain boundary. While the regulatory firm panels and FIS report describe what is at risk by identifying the flood hazard areas, flood depth and analysis grids can help define and quantify how severe the risk is for those identified areas. These grids are intended to be used by communities for additional analysis, enhanced visualization, and communication of flood risk for hazard mitigation planning and emergency management. This concludes the training video.